So one day we had a gentleman come in and he wanted to pre-order a new snowmobile. And he wasn't quite ready to put the deposit down quite yet, but he owns a farm over in Albion. He's like, hey, I've got some cows that gotta go to slaughter and I'll have the money in another month. I'm like, well, pre-order will be over in another month. He's like, well, how about this? I'll pay you a half a cow right now <laughs> worth of meat for the swap of my, for the order of my soul bill. And I said, that sounds fair. <laughs> so the next day we get a half of a black Angus cow dropped off to the pot store. And Dan only been here for like, I don't know, a week or two. And he's like, why, why are we having a cow come and everything else? <laughs> but that's kind of the stuff we do a little different. Well, at least it was here. processed. It was all processed. Yeah, at least it wasn't like a front anything. cow, front half or back half. The only problem was we didn't have a freezer that would fit it all. Oh so we had God. to go to the neighbor and beg to borrow his <laughs> freezer. And we filled this freezer. So that sometimes creates the other problems of what we got to deal with around here. Is, yeah. Well, if you make the deal work and yeah. everybody's happy at the end of the day, then <laughs> whatever works. What is up, guys? Joe Holland here. I am here in Unity, Maine at my snowmobile dealer, Chase Toys. And we're gonna shoot a little video today showing everybody at home how to get their snowmobile snow season ready, take it out of summer storage, do a little maintenance, change a belt, and also talk some other snowmobile stuff. These guys are the best guys I know in the business. They've saved my butt a couple times. They've been great with me for customer service. We've added a few accessories to my snowmobile that we'll show you for this upcoming season. Let's get on with it. I brought the boys some coffee and donuts to butter them up a little bit, just because they're great guys. You guys take trade ins, yep. coffee and donuts for some new snowmobiles? Yep, we'll take them every day. There you go. <laughs> Unity is this really cool town in the middle of Maine that is pretty much an old agriculture town. I used to come here a lot to fish at Unity Pond. This tremendous bass fish and now it's got really good crappy fishing in it. And of course Chase Toys is here. Now there's a great big Amish community up here. And I don't know what the, all their rules are. They got a lot of different rules for the Amish that are different than most people. So I think they're not allowed to use anything with tires, maybe? Because I've seen them use gasoline engines, so I'm kind of curious if the Amish are allowed to ride snowmobiles. I'll ask. So I can't wait for ice fishing. You guys know me, or snowmobiling. We are in that part of the year where it's a good idea to go through your stuff and make sure everything's ready to go because the season is so quick now. If you lose a day or a week or a month to a breakdown or a maintenance issue, it's just not acceptable. You, you lose too much of your season for that. So this is a really good time of year to go over your sled, make sure everything's in good work and order so you're not losing any time and you don't do any damage or cause any injuries as the year's going up. Lucky for me, Darren here at Chase is gonna walk us through most or everything that you need to know about bringing your snowmobile out of summer storage and getting it ready for the season. First thing, the way I look at things, it's been sitting there all summer. Let's just look at stuff. Everything has antifreeze, everything has oil. First thing, look underneath the snowmobile. If you have any oil, antifreeze, I would definitely Try to see where it's coming from. If not, uh, obviously bring it to us and we'll find out where it's coming from. Second thing that I like to check, throttle cable. A lot of stuff today, especially like Joe's four stroke, it's fly by wire. But I always just double check that it returns. Especially with cable, you could have a fray in there. You never know, you don't want it sticking wide open. That's bad, bad, bad. And the next thing that I check, I uh, go underneath the side panel. I'm gonna take this off so you can see better. Sure. Always checking here, four strokes. Have an engine oil dipstick. Pull it out. You can see it's right where it needs to be. 
you could probably start this up for 30 seconds to a minute just let the engine oil circulate it'd be a bit more accurate but we know there is oil in it on two strokes you have your mixing oil reservoir right here let's make sure that it's full uh, what we have been finding on some of them with all the units where the cap goes on they distort huh. out of round oh, wow um, engine oil or two-stroke oil will dump onto your clutches so i'm just going to remove the belt guard yeah, these go in there pretty tricky, don't they? I'm just gonna get them just right. <laughs> that was that was actually really good. <laughs> You've done this before. With your tool kit, there is a spot to put them right here on the clutch cover. We do not recommend it. We've had a couple customers take out their belt tool to remove it. Oh, the belt to tool. Put it back in. Okay. And you have your suspension adjustment tool here that falls out. Yeah. Goes underneath the clutch and destroys the clutch. Oh, okay. It's very pricey. Yep, so don't store it there. We do not store them here. We recommend that you put them in your glove box. Okay, cool, good to know. That's why mine's not there. Exactly. You guys you guys took care of me, thank exactly. you. Exactly, check your belt. I'll just show you really quickly how to do it. Joe's got all kinds of stuff up here. I don't even know what's in there. Batteries. Nice. Oh, GoPro batteries? Uh, D batteries. Oh. <laughs> so this is your belt removal tool. All right. Um, it also works for all your torque screws that are on the vehicle, so you had to access your battery. That's the actual tool that you okay. use. The um, reason why I take this off, there's actually a hole right here that this would go into. Okay. Um, Joe's had this in here for recent service, so we know this belt's good. This will be awesome for guys in the field that need to change a belt. Yep. Uh, we try to go that over that. Uh, we've had quite a few new people this year to the sport mm -hmm. um explaining how to do this because they don't they don't know right yeah so, until you until you learn so you roll this off getting it out from in here is a little tricky because this tolerances are pretty tight and now you're gonna see the struggle yeah they make everything so tight nowadays <laughs> there it is wow that was quick so on skidoos, there is an arrow that says rotation. That's always facing towards the front of the vehicle. Okay. But in looking at the belt, this one's had some little bit of time on it, but there is a cord in here and I'm gonna show you on a different belt because you can see it more visible, which is underneath this cover. So there's this cord right here. Yeah. If that's frayed out anything and looks like a bunny hair or something, mm -hmm. we want to change that. Because okay. what's going to happen is this is going to continue to pull out and then the belt could blow up, cause more damage underneath, and then again, stuck on the side of the trail. So when we're checking mine coming out of storage yep. uh, after after a pretty good season, um, what are we, we're looking for that belt fray, anything for else? belt fray inside of here. If you bend this up, you would see cracking. Mm -hmm. That's heat or stress crack. Okay again we want to change that out yeah and then do you just visually inspect it for any yeah. any um, cuts or abrasions on what you may find here um the clutches the faces themselves will have an oxidation on them okay um, because of sweating or whatever it be some scotch bright some light scotch bright clean that stuff off because you mm -hmm. don't want it impregnated into your belt um, i always recommend taking these off for the summer anyway because they will actually form just oh like yeah that. So you take it off, it'll actually be perfectly round. You know, both with the secondary and primary. Um, it's gonna be hard to turn over because this is a four stroke, it's got a lot of compression. Make sure visually, you know, rollers. I mean, again, that's getting into the technical aspect of it. That's what we look at when we do services here. Again, so, this so that belt that. after 1100 miles still looks awesome. Um, it, it looks fine. Good. Nothing's frayed out. There is a little bit of glazing, but we know you use it. Yeah, it's it's definitely a workhorse. So putting this back on again. Again, this is fun. I didn't realize there was a direction on those. There is, yeah. Yeah, this is real these are really good tips. This is gonna help some people in the field. You just roll that back on. Just watch your fingers right here. And then when you're backing this out, I spin it. Because if you back it out, see how it gets stuck? Yeah. So this is what I do is I just... 
Yeah, these are great tricks. Most generally, when you're changing a belt, say you did have an issue on the trail. Mm -hmm. Belt deflection, you can make these too tight. Okay. Especially like where you have electronic reverse, it's an actual motor solenoid. Um, if these belts are too tight, this distance, because you can actually adjust this here, your reverse will not go in. Okay. But this is most generally belt deflection. This is where it needs to be for height, mm -hmm. roughly. Okay, back that out. Good to go. General inspection of all your idle wheels. You know, make sure that all the rubber is on there. Um, it's hard. I mean, if you had a way to pick it up, you could spin them. Um, but again, just a general inspection. Make sure all the rubber is on these. Uh, looking at the track itself, you know, make sure there's no rip lugs on. Uh, if there's no rubber on these, there's actually a plastic or a fiberglass rod in here. Right here? Right in here, yeah. yeah. Which makes it rigid. That's where your driver's up in the front hook onto to make it go. Okay. Um, just make sure there's no rip lugs. Uh, that could come up into the heat exchanger, poke a hole in it, you lose antifreeze, you could lose a motor and not even know. And where are you looking for the rips? Like right at the uh, base? Right, right here or? at the base. Okay. Uh, anything on the side here, cut, or even inside here, cutting in. And this is an ice ripper track, so it has like the studs in your car. You actually have some picks in here, you know, make sure none of those are ripped out, yeah. bent over. Make, make sure none break. are loose if you can too. Correct. Okay. I heard of a guy losing a brand new sled because he sent... He sent one into the heat exchanger. Yeah. That's a basic go around. Again, with the fluids, engine oil, uh, brake, which is all clear, visual. I mean, this is in good shape. It's where it needs to be. Um, antifreeze, which is over here on the other side. I mean, the engine's cold right now. This is an expansion tank. This isn't your actual reservoir. Um, right now it's in the cold. This is the mark right here for the hot. So this is actually in great shape. So those are, that's all there is for fluid, those three different ones. Yep, just add gas, go. Yep. So four stroke, there isn't a way to fog the engine. Um, you could get moisture within the engine uh, causing rust or whatnot. So in the four stroke, me personally, I start mine once a month. Mm -hmm. um, in the two stroke aspect of it, you can actually, loud truck. Um, the two stroke aspect, you can fog them. Uh, I believe 90% of them you can do right on the snowmobile. There is a sequence. I believe it's in the owner's manual, but again, if you don't know that, you could call us and we could talk you through it. Um, the reason for that, with a two stroke, if you fog that in the summer, do not start it. Just let it set until you're ready to take them out for in the fall. This tool here. Yes. Um, this is like a toolbox in your hand. What this will also do, uh, your front shocks. Okay. So like right now, Joe's shocks are on low or soft. Um, he did notice a little bit of what we call pushing in the corners um, because he has so much weight on the back. So we're actually gonna give him more ski pressure with this wrench. So in these little notches, you just lock it in it's easier if you could get the snowmobile off the ground a little bit. It takes pressure off, but we can do it right here. Oh, nice. So we're going to put it probably two, because I know he likes to pack heavy. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that just put a lot more that pressure, on, put pressure on the skis. So when you're into the corner, it just gives you more bite. Awesome. And then if I feel like I'm getting too much bite and it's hard to just turn. just back that off one. Okay, one. Okay, yep. yep. Awesome. Yeah, that's quite a tool. You awesome. want to do that the same on each side. On the rear suspension, there's actually a block where you can stiffen it up. Uh, what you may find, uh, say, especially this where it has a two-up situation, um, if you're sagging too much in the rear, which will also take ski pressure off from the front. If you look right down here, there's this block. Yep. You actually have it on the softest setting right now, oh, which wow. is number one. Okay. And then it's marked number two, three, and four. Gotcha. Okay. Um, 
if you want, we can bump this up where you haul heavy. We'll open sure. it up a little yeah. bit. Yeah, how do you, so how would you adjust that so one? So that's on this big knot or the hex. And this also does have the air ride suspension it too. It does, but I know you can adjust it. Yeah. That's more for plush comfort. Okay. Um, this is gonna take a little bit of weight off from that shock and it doesn't work so hard. Nice. You won't bottom out as far. Awesome. Yeah, this is cool. And again, this is a lot easier if it's off the ground. Yeah. And I can tell you, sometimes you get your fingers, but. I'm glad you didn't. There's one there. We'll go with one. Yeah. Um, then we'll just try that. Sure. Okay, so you do, is it a both side thing? Both sides again. Gotcha, okay. So again. That was pretty easy because I think the shock's pumped up pretty good. Yeah. Sweet. So that's what that tool is. Let's see, the next thing we'll probably go over what you got for accessories this year. So I guess the first thing we'll show is your glove box extension. So last year it was just a physical lid here that you lift it up. We put this glove box extension on, which actually has a heated cell phone holder. Nice. So if you're not using a GPS, you can use the GPS through your phone. Uh, just keep in mind it does work off cell phone signal. Um, but that would just open this up. Sweet. Sit it right in there. And then you got everything and it's all touch screen right through here. Oh, nice. And it's protected from it the elements. It is protected from elements and you got obviously more storage space. And it's going to have heat like from the motor? No, nope, it's actually got an element right oh, there in the back. Actually, wow. That's awesome. I didn't even know that. <laughs> um, the second thing we added, you said that you couldn't see at night very much. Well, the only the, the only thing about this sled that I was a little disappointed on, out of everything on it, where the lights weren't as good as I was expecting. Yeah. So we installed uh, LED lights. Oh boy. Which give you a cleaner white light versus a yellow. I know when we put it in the trailer, they were it super was bright. Completely different. Yeah. Night and day difference, you can call it. Yeah, no pun intended. And the third thing that we have not installed, but we are going to install today. Look at how wide they are. We got ski <laughs> liners that literally make them a third wider. Wow, look at that. Bigger is better. Bigger is better. More flotation where you're off trail. Um, these uh, ex expeditions we put a lot on. Um, Shed hunters, off trail. Uh, we have a bunch of guys that don't even go on trail anymore. They just set a coordinate through GPS and they boondock it and go. Wow. So these are a huge help. And I, we're when I got on that like four foot of wicked powder last year, I think these would have helped a lot. Yeah, a lot. Because I got a lot of weight, plus the sled's pretty heavy. And right. I noticed I was like augering down. And with this particular model, with this, like this would catch a you lot of the snow. Yep. And then once that catches this the snow. This will give you more float, get you up on top. So But we do have oh cool all right so that you, was the this was a usb plug-in nice that that's installed. new um so you can have your cell phone in there while the vehicle's running and charging yep and, and while i'm running the cell phone here i can actually just run it right off that absolutely or charge my gopro batteries yep sweet yeah so that's four new items for this sled just for this year alone as, as far as coming out of the summer maintenance i think we've covered just about everything Pretty other than much everything yep um so this sled should be good to go. I should be ready if it snows tomorrow to be able to turn the key and full confidence. So I, I bring mine in guys at the end of the year for a service anyway, and uh, service it sometime over the summer when these guys aren't quite as busy. They, they've always been great customer service about getting me in and getting me back out in a pinch. Last year I, I had a pinch pretty early and they got me they got me out that same day actually but it is a good idea to get your service done and your maintenance done in the off season so you're ready to go and that's what I did on this machine so I'm really confident 
that we're going to have another great year and I'll be able to do everything that I need to do this year and get into some good places and the most importantly get out of those places too. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's all fun being broke down in the woods. No, these guys watch all the videos too and they cringe at some of the places I've put this snowmobile and then when I bring it in and they see a scratch on it they're like oh yeah that's where that came from yeah. or, or that's why I had mud in it last year. <laughs> At the end of February, Skidoo puts out a release on YouTube on the up and coming new models and whatnot. Um, the day after that is launched, um, we're able to open up what's called Spring Check, uh, which is at the end of February, usually after Valentine's Day. We're only allocated so many snowmobiles to sell, and that's by model. So we just, for instance, we just a hypothetical number, we can only have five Expedition SEs or LEs. So if you're interested in this type of vehicle or any type of vehicle, you need to come to see us as soon as possible. We literally sold out what we were allocated for in a week and a half. Wow. This is not money. What is it? Well, the commies, and um, by the time I buy heating oil and gas and food, it'll be gone. That's true. Well, Darren, I think I'm going to buy a new sled today. Really? Yeah, I'm going to buy this one right here. I uh, better buy two, but it's all. <laughs> I don't think it'll fit me, but I know somebody that it will fit. I've been crazy happy with these guys, and every time I've been here, this is actually the only time I've been here where this place wasn't packed. And if you were here for the last hour, like I've been, you'd have seen about 40 people come and go. So we must be hitting like lunch hour or something. But uh, it's a really busy place. They get you in and out. There's eight guys here right now working. So there's a bunch of guys in the back, a bunch of guys in the front, and it's been the best customer service I've seen in the industry. I mean, I know most places in Maine you're not going to survive if you're not if you don't have great customer service anyway. But these guys definitely excel in their customer service.